a very good morning to all of you as we have decided we will be beginning with the topic derivatives and in this particular session we will be talking about hedging through futures contracts so let me first of all tell you something when we talk about derivatives generally four types of derivatives come into picture forward contracts futures contracts options and swaps now uh, the basic part of derivatives what are forwards what are futures i'm sure you would have learnt and here we are going to specifically deal with futures contract and how to hedge risks through futures contract so there will be a lot of matters that you will have to deal with for example how to hedge with stock futures how to hedge with index futures how to hedge foreign currency risk through currency futures contract how to hedge commodity risk through commodity futures that is the objective of this particular session so uh, let us straight away begin with hedging through futures contract so under this heading hedging through futures contract i would want you to write the subheading hedging with stock futures in your notebooks please write hedging with stock futures once you have written this heading hedging with stock futures let us uh, talk about a particular scenario now this line is an expectation about movement of a stock price assume that currently the price is rupees 490 and you can see the price is expected to drop now this is not a past trend this is basically indication of sentiment of the investor and investors expectation is that the price would drop to somewhere around 420 that will be after 3 months so first of all you understand one basic thing we are talking about a situation where the investor is holding a stock the current market price of the stock is 490 expected price after 3 months the price is going to decline that is the expectation of the investor that is the sentiment of the investor now definitely if you keep holding the stock you are going to incur a loss it is inevitable because if what you are foreseeing what you are expecting if that happens the stock price which is currently 490 will drop to 420 and the investor will be incurring a loss now over here what is needed what is needed some strategy has to be brought into use best thing what can be done someone may suggest that yes okay fine if you are holding the stock which is at a high price right now you better sell it and you can repurchase the stock at a later date when the price drops to 420 so at 490 you sell and at 420 you buy now at 490 if you sell and if at 420 you repurchase it's a good strategy that is sell now and buy later because the price is expected to drop we are considering that the investors sentiment over here is bearish a bearish sentiment of the investor indicates that the investor is now expecting that the price will drop now 
it is not going to happen that your sentiments will always go correct it may drop it may not drop anything can happen so selling the stock now and buying it later is definitely one good strategy but that is not what we refer to as hedging it is not what we refer to as hedging because if you sell the stock now and what if the price rises possible right in that case your strategy won't work when you hedge the stock position or i would say when you hedge the risk of a price decline through futures contract that's a proper way to hedge your risk the term hedge itself means managing your risk that means hedging through futures means managing your risk through futures contract now the question is how to do so i am telling you one thing very clearly we are not going into the other streamline of the strategy where you would sell the stock now and buy later selling the stock is not our objective we would want to hold the stock for a long term we have some objectives we don't want to sell it now if we don't want to sell it now and still we wouldn't want to hedge the risk of the price decline that we are expecting how to do this here you always should understand the position that you are holding now you are holding the stock correct because you are holding the stock your position with the stock is considered as a long position now there will be a futures contract available with respect to this particular stock so there are two possibilities the stock that you are holding the derivative market is having a futures contract with respect to that same stock second possibility there is no futures contract available for the same stock i am telling you once again there are two possibilities in the derivative market in the futures market there is a futures contract available for the same stock that you are holding second possibility there is no futures contract available for the same stock so under both the possibilities how to deal with the hedging strategy that is what we are talking about so let us deal with the first possibility first where the stock has the same futures contract in the derivative market that means derivative market has maintained a futures contract for the same stock in such case because you have a long position with the stock to hedge your risk you have to take a short position i repeat because you have a long position with the stock to hedge your risk you must take a short position in futures i am not going to go into the details of what is long position what is short position i have explained these in the basic lectures of derivatives which i have given in my channel if you want to refer those basic things do watch the introductory video on derivatives on my channel as of now just to make you clear a long position means you are buying and holding and a short position means you are selling now and buying it later this meaning of long and short position is what we see in stock market in the futures contract what is the meaning of long and short position it has a little different meaning so please try to understand it very well so that you don't get confused long position under a futures contract indicates taking a position to buy at the contracted price a short position in the futures contract indicates taking a position to sell at the contracted price now see what happens this price 490 what you are observing as the current price that is the spot price right that is the spot price of the stock now there is a system of assessing the futures price and what we call as fair futures price you know a element an element towards interest is added in the spot price to arrive at ffp that is fair futures price so in the derivative market the futures contract for the same stock will not be priced at 490 will not be priced less than 490 it will be definitely be priced a little higher than 490 because when you compute ffp it is s0 that is spot price 
मल्टीप्लाइड बाय ई रेस टू आर टी ई रेस टू आर टी इज द फ्यूचर वैल्यू फैक्टर बेस्ड ऑन कंटिन्यूस कंपाउंडिंग फ्यूचर वैल्यू ऑफ एनी अमाउंट विल ऑलवेज बी ग्रेटर देन द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू यू नो इट वेरी वेल राइट सो फ्यूचर प्राइस विल ऑलवेज बी ग्रेटर देन द स्पॉट प्राइस इन सच केस लेट एस ऑब्जर्व दैट इफ नथिंग इज डन ओवर हियर इन दिस सिनारियो द रिजल्ट विल बी देल बी एक्सपेक्टेड लॉस ऑफ रुपीज सेवेंटी नाउ वी फाइंड दैट देर इज अ थ्री मंथ फ्यूचर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विच इज कोटेड एट फाइव हंड्रेड वाई इट इज कोटेड एट फाइव हंड्रेड आई टोल्ड यू द फ्यूचर्स प्राइस विल ऑलवेज बी स्लाइटली हायर देन द स्पॉट प्राइस सो वॉट यू डू दिस फ्यूचर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट यू एंटर इन टू दिस फ्यूचर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद अ शॉर्ट पोजिशन वेन आई से यू एंटर इन टू दिस फ्यूचर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद अ शॉर्ट पोजिशन वॉट वी मीन इज यू टेक अ शॉर्ट पोजिशन मीन्स you agree to sell at 500 i repeat you agree to sell at the contracted price that is 500 now you should know one thing very well in futures contract or generally in derivative market whatever kind of contracts you are entering there will be no actual buying and selling happening the contracts are settled through the net position and that net position could be either a gain or a loss so what you would do to enter into a futures contract you will deposit a margin with the exchange through your broker you deposit a margin with the exchange as and when you are having gains that gain will be added to the margin as and when you are incurring losses losses will be withdrawn from that margin if the margin balance is falling short exchange will demand more money to be deposited this is how the exchange regulation works for the futures contract that is the price mechanism and the margin in sorry margin maintenance mechanism in the futures market now once you have observed that the price of this futures contract is 500 you enter into this contract with a short position means when you are entering into this futures contract you are agreeing to sell you are agreeing to sell at 500 now you know that after 3 months you are expecting the price to drop to what 420 but you will be having right to sell this at rupees 500 if you have right to sell this at rupees 500 you will be getting a gain of rupees 80 how you will get that gain of rupees 80 because you have agreed to sell the stock at 500 as per the futures contract and when the futures contract is settled on expiry after 3 months the price of the stock and the price of the futures contract will be at par because at the expiry of the futures contract when it is about to get settled its price and the stock price will be at parity because there is no gap between the stock price at that date and the futures remaining period because the remaining period of the futures contract will become zero days that means if the price actually gets dropped to 420 on settlement of the futures contract you will get a gain of rupees 80 so how will you get that gain you will be getting that gain by entering into this contract with a short position it will result into wealth of 500 after 3 months gain on futures contract will offset the loss in stock price and the gain on futures contract will be rupees 80 so you understand your stock will be worth 420 and the gain from futures contract that you will earn in cash will be rupees 80 your total wealth in hand will be 500 this is how we hedge through futures contract so today's wealth 490 did not come down to 420 it actually has gone up to 500 this is how you secure yourself when you enter into futures contract with the hedging objective someone may doubt that what if the price rises now suppose the price rises then in futures contract definitely you will be incurring a loss correct if the price rises you will be definitely incurring the loss suppose from 490 the price rises to 550 you expected that the price will drop but that was your expectation that was your sentiment in reality something else may happen so suppose the price rises to 550 after 3 months then your stock value is how much your stock value today 
is 490 it rises to 550 your wealth has already increased to 550 one thing kept aside now you have agreed to sell the stock at 500 in the futures contract the market price has gone up to 550 when the contract is settled that is when the futures contract is settled you will have to pay the difference between 550 and 500 as a loss you will have to pay that amount that amount will be drawn from your margin that you have deposited with the exchange so you incurred a loss of 50 but your stock value went to 550 correct 550 of stock and loss of 50 if you net it off you still have wealth of 500 in your hand so once you enter into futures contract like this to hedge your position it is guaranteed that your wealth which is today at 490 it will marginally rise to 500 irrespective of whatever price prevails after three months this kind of strategy is a foolproof strategy so many people resort to a different strategy that you sell the stock now and buy it later i am saying you sell the stock now at 490 and you want to buy it later when the price rises up to 550 you know per share you will be actually paying extra 60 and that goes out of your pocket just like that those strategies can fail hedging strategy through futures contract will never fail whatever happens you will not incur loss that is guaranteed but once you enter into a futures contract with hedging objective the contract won't even let you earn profit for example when the price rises from 490 to 550 if you would not have taken any futures contract you would have made a gain of what you would have made a gain of 60 rupees right but here because you have entered into a futures contract you will not be able to make that gain of rupees 60 you may make a little marginal gain whatever be the difference between the spot price and futures price for example in this case the spot price of the share is 490 the futures price in the derivative market is how much the futures price in the derivative market is 500 that difference you will end up earning that is guaranteed you will not incur loss that is guaranteed now what happens after three months with the stock you had a long position with the futures contract you had a short position futures contract simply got settled so futures contract got settled now the price after three months suppose it is actually 420 now you are expecting that the price will again rise then you wait and watch let the price rise your stock is at 420 it will rise so when the stock price dropped from 490 to 420 one side you incurred a loss of 70 but that loss got recovered through the gain that you have made in the futures contract that is the advantage of taking futures contract as the base for hedging and this is what we call as hedging through stock futures so guys what we are going to do for each variety of hedging that is hedging through stock futures hedging through index futures hedging through currency futures i have uh, placed some questions and uh, it will be good if you have copy of those questions before we proceed ahead so you can please visit my telegram channel and you can download the copy of the questions right away and please message me uh, what is the outcome whether you have downloaded the copy or not once you confirm that you have the copy ready we will proceed ahead with questions i am giving you time you note down this entire example in your notebooks and parallelly do one more activity please uh, download the copy of questions from my telegram channel once you are done with both of these activities please uh, message me in the chat box and uh, i will continue with the class once I get the confirmation.
all right i am getting indications and messages from you that you are done with writing this example as well as you are done with downloading the copy of the notes and let us move ahead now please refer to question number 15 that you have been given over there in the notes let us read this question mr x holds 5000 equity shares in ng limited these shares are currently quoted at rupees 480 per share the investor is willing to hold these shares for a considerable time and then sell these at a price which is expected to be much higher in this plan of holding the shares and selling these later the investor also has risk of loss that is if the price of the share falls below rupees 480 per share suppose a six month futures contract for shares of ng limited is quoted at rupees 492 per share explain how mr x can hedge by using stock futures for this purpose consider the following situations number one price of equity share falls to rupees 460 per share and situation number two is price of equity share rises to rupees 500 per share so when you are dealing with a scenario like this how should you approach how should you analyze and plan your hedge first thing look at what the investor is holding investor is holding a particular share and the investor is having risk of the price decline that means investor has a long position with the stock defined now immediately look at whether the futures contract for the same stock is available or not this line if we read suppose a six month futures contract for shares of ng limited is quoted at 492 per share is quoted at 492 per share means derivative market has offered the stock futures that means futures contract for the same stock is available so we are into the first possibility that the futures contract for the same stock is available here you will be using stock futures so you will be using stock futures to hedge your position now how do you plan your hedge how to plan your hedge you can plan your hedge by considering a short position in the futures contract so you have to take a short position in the futures contract the fundamental logic behind taking a short position is you want to retain the futures contract to nullify the impact of the stock holding so if stock holding is going downward that means if stock holding is giving you a loss you should be compensated in the derivative market that means you should be compensated in the futures contract and when the price is moving down you can be compensated if you are able to sell at a high price and that is why to sell it at a high price should be your objective and that is why you have to take a reverse position so in the stock if you have a long position in the futures contract you will have a short position and then how to answer both of these scenarios i will just uh, you know explain you and with the facts and figures the calculations will be done one more instruction as and when i am displaying the solution if you understand it don't put enough time to note down the whole solution you just take a screenshot or you can take a picture of the solution and later on you can write it in your notebooks so that will be actually a good way to revise what you have learned in this session so let me now explain you how to put up the solution over here in your solution first you write in the given case mr x can simply enter into the futures contract to sell 5000 equity shares of ng limited after six months at the specified futures price of rupees 492 per share by doing so he would obtain a gain of 492 minus 480 why 492 minus 480 because current market price of the share is 480 you are entering into a futures contract with a short position means you are agreeing to sell at 492 it will actually give you rupees 12 as a profit per share or gain per share and because you are holding 5000 shares you would have same magnitude of your futures contract that means you should enter into futures contract with short position for 5000 shares definitely and that would give you a total gain of 12 multiplied by 5000 shares that is 60000 
irrespective of the prevailing market price on the maturity date. The following situations can demonstrate the net gain of rupees 60,000. So now I am going to refer to those two cases that were given in the question. So let us deal with the first case. The first case or the first situation says price of equity share falls to rupees 460. So in your stock portfolio where you have a long position, what will be the outcome? Value today is 5000 shares into 480 that is rupees 24 lakhs and the expected value after 6 months if the price falls to 460 the expected value of your stock portfolio will be 23 lakhs that is 5000 shares multiplied by 460 so you will be incurring a loss of rupees 1 lakh on the other side what would happen in your futures contract where you have taken a short position resulting gain will be 492 minus 460 multiplied by 5000 that would be 1 lakh 60000 now what is this calculation try to understand you have entered into the futures contract with a short position at a contracted price of 492 that means you have agreed to sell at 492 when the contract comes to a settlement point that is at its maturity we are expecting the price of the share will be 460 that day the futures contract will be settled at 460 in other words you have agreed to sell the share at 492 but the price of the share as per the futures contract prevailing that day is just 460 because you have agreed to sell it at a high price compared to the price which is prevailing on the settlement you will be making a gain of rupees 32 per share multiplied by 5000 shares that is 160000 so you understand one thing in your stock portfolio you incurred a loss of rupees 1 lakh in the futures contract you made a gain of 1 lakh 60000 your net gain will be rupees 60000 so do one thing i give you a moment you take the screenshot snapshot you click a picture do whatever make sure that you are done and clear with this so that i can proceed ahead Alright, I am sure you have taken the image of this solution. Let us move ahead and deal with the second situation. In the second situation, we are expecting that what would happen if the price of the share rises to 500. Now, what will happen in your stock portfolio where you have a long position value today is 24 lakhs value after 6 months will be 5000 shares into 500 that will be rupees 25 lakhs. Here you will be making a gain of 1 lakh but your futures contract won't let you enjoy this gain. You will be incurring a loss in your futures contract but not equal to 1 lakh. The loss amount will be less than this. Let me show you the loss over here. You know in futures contract you have entered into a short position with a contract price of 492. On the settlement the price of the share is rupees 500. So your loss will be difference between 492 and 500 that will be loss of rupees 8 per share multiplied to 5000 shares your resulting loss will be 40,000 so your overall net gain still comes to rupees 60,000 so same instruction please uh, take the snapshot of the same take the screenshot of the same and let me know once you are ready to move ahead and I take you to the next segment after this.
all right friends uh, i am sure you are done with this so time for us to move ahead and we now deal with the next concept that is concept number 11 hedging through index futures when we started the earlier discussion i told you that if you are holding stock where there is a risk of price decline and you want to protect yourself you want to hedge your position how would you do that i told you there can be two possibilities possibility number one would be where futures contract for the same stock is available but let me tell you the reality in stock market how many shares do you think would be listed in totality have you ever imagined in stock market what would be the total number of shares listed there will be say around more than 4000 shares that will be listed on any recognized stock exchange but futures contract you will be finding for hardly some 50 to 60 selected stocks only where the trading volume is really very high see where the trading volume is very high then derivative market can find that product as worth placing as a futures contract or as option contract where public in general will be trading in those futures and option contracts because they are dealing in the stocks same stocks if you have futures and options contract public will be interested to deal in options and futures also with the purpose of speculation arbitrage or hedging any objective so three possible objectives speculation arbitrage hedging whatever be your objective you will be interested in those instruments because the stock which is the underlying correct the stock is the underlying for those futures and option contract that stock is traded in a heavy volume in the stock market then it makes sense for the futures market that they would place a contract of futures or they would place a contract of options for such stocks as i told you imagine 2000 plus stocks listed in the stock exchange and only 40 to 50 stocks having futures contract available now imagine that you are holding a share whose futures contract is not available how will you hedge it's a question mark right so here you have to resort to hedging through index futures every stock market will have its own index for example in india bombay stock exchange bsc its index is known as sensex which itself is a portfolio of 30 selected stocks national stock exchange having its index as nifty having 50 selected stocks as a portfolio now you cannot buy and sell nifty but you can enter into a contract of nifty futures with long position or short position whatever you want to do entering into futures contract for that index in simple words if it is nifty that i am talking about entering into nifty futures now here you need to understand you want to hedge the risk of your stock but you are entering into futures contract of nifty here you need interrelationship between your stock and nifty futures what could be relating your stock with nifty futures you should know that very well and here comes the role of beta we have discussed these things in the portfolio topic correct what is beta beta is a measure of relative risk it relates risk of your stock with the market index so if it is relating your stock with the market index or with the risk of the market index you would find that beta becomes the basis for connecting your stock with the nifty futures or with the index future and therefore with that connection you will create a hedge and you would then want to create a perfect hedge now what happens generally with futures contract you may not always be able to create a perfect hedge now what is a perfect hedge perfect hedge is a plan where you would not incur any loss you will not even make any profit 
but your net profit or loss will be zero that is what we call as perfect hedge but that is on paper when you plan it can be planned as a perfect hedge in reality the price movements may not match with exactly what you plan there may be a marginal amount of gain or loss but if you are planning a perfect hedge whatever be gain or loss it will be minimal so instead of incurring a heavy loss due to price decline you may have a minimal loss and that minimal loss is still considered as tremendously good compared to having an open position where your risk is unhedged so hedging always is a very good strategy particularly when you are sensing a risk correct so fear in the stock market trading is an emotion that you need to control two types of emotions investors have greed and fear you should know about this and when you are holding a stock and its price is moving up 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 correct you are making gains and you become greedy you would say that let me hold this stock still more and then you know at a better time when the price further rises then i'll sell when the price even comes to that level no no let me hold this stock for little more because the price is rising up this kind of greed can sometimes put you at a loss the other kind of emotion that an investor can have is fear when the price declines and you are holding that stock you are at fear and you would want to you know sell out your stock otherwise a loss will go on increasing see disciplined trading would want an investor not to have any such emotion while trading in markets no greed no fear but if you have to trade in stock market fearless you need to have some backing it is hedging strategy that gives you that backing it makes you fearless in the stock market so how to use index futures for hedging let us understand this in good details and we will take up some good examples initial examples what i'll bring forward will be for individual stocks how to hedge through index futures and then how to hedge your entire portfolio through index futures even that we will discuss about but the connecting point between your stock and the market is beta of your stock connecting point between your portfolio and the market will be beta of your portfolio there comes a the concept of portfolio beta and portfolio beta as you have learned in portfolio topic portfolio beta is the weighted average of betas of individual stocks where the weights are the proportion of money that you have invested so portfolio concepts what you have learned with respect to beta of an individual stock or with respect to beta of portfolio will be widely used when you are planning hedging through index futures so let us do one thing let us try to understand the whole scenario through an example uh, let me bring forward that example for you that is given in your sheet as question number 16 let us read this question mr x holds 4000 equity shares of a limited such shares are currently priced at rupees 400 per share the correlation of equity share of a limited with nifty futures is 0.8 standard deviation of a's stock is 6% standard deviation of nifty futures is 4% nifty is quoted at 7960 in spot 3 months nifty futures is quoted at rupees 8000 you are required to explain how the investor can create a perfect hedge what will be the outcome if after 3 months the share price falls to 340 per share or it rises to 448 per share so what we will do is what we will do is we are going to analyze this situation first of all so what is to be done let me explain this in detail you hold 4000 equity shares of a limited that is your stock portfolio single share shares of a limited 4000 shares and each share is currently priced at 400 so what will be the total value of your portfolio if you pick your calculator 4000 shares into 400 will give you what 16 lakhs 16 lakhs is the total value of your portfolio you want to hedge your portfolio risk through nifty futures 
for that you need to have interrelationship between your stock and nifty futures and that could be through beta now beta of your stock with nifty futures is not given in this question readily available you will have to compute beta and how to compute beta we have learnt initially under portfolio topic when you compute beta you take the standard deviation of your stock divided by standard deviation of the index future or in this case nifty futures and multiply the same with the correlation between your stock and nifty futures once you get the beta value then you multiply the beta value to the value of your stock portfolio and that much will be the value for you to trade in nifty futures now position that you have to take in nifty futures will depend upon whether the beta is positive or negative if the beta is positive means your stock and nifty futures both are going to move in same direction then to hedge the long position of your stock you have to take short position with the nifty futures so let us go step by step very systematically and over here on purpose i will be going a little slower so each one of you even if you are listening to me on this for the first time you should be able to understand the whole concept so let us go step by step so in the solution what you would first do is first step you determine the value of stock portfolio at present that will be number of shares multiplied by spot price per share that is 4000 shares into 400 per share that is rupees 16 lakhs second step will be to determine beta of stock with index futures and that beta of your stock will be standard deviation of stock divided by standard deviation of market multiplied by correlation between your stock and market now standard deviation of your stock is given as 6% standard deviation of nifty futures is given as 4% and correlation between the two is given as 0.8 so 6 by 4 into 0.8 would give you 1.2 as beta before i take you ahead quickly take the screenshot of this and uh, also tell me whether you are done and clear with this and then I move ahead. All right, if you have taken note of this, let me tell you what role this beta has to play. So, the value of the stock that you are holding is 16 lakhs. How much value should be the value of Nifty Futures where you take some position? First thing first, beta of your stock is 1.2. But more than 1.2, I am interested in knowing that is beta positive or negative. Most important thing. Many people, what they do is they blindly, they blindly take short position in index futures. If you do that, it is madness. It is a big trap. You enter into the trap, gone. If the beta of the stock is negative, means your stock is moving in opposite direction with market. When market is declining, your stock is rising. If that is the scenario, to hedge your stock where you have a long position, you should enter into nifty futures also with a long position. Then only hedging will happen. But here beta is positive. Beta positive means it is indicating that the direction in which nifty futures will move is the same direction in which your stock will move. Means either both will rise or both will fall. In such case, the nature of the futures contract is similar to that of stock futures because in case of stock futures we did not talk like this correct correct no in case of stock futures we did not talk like this because correlation between your stock and stock futures will always be positive it cannot have a negative correlation how can it happen that your stock price is rising and its futures contract price is falling 
it is impossible but it can definitely be possible when it is hedging through index futures beta can be negative if correlation between your stock and market index is negative beta can be negative if beta is negative your hedging approach will be different as of now beta is positive giving a clear indication that your stock is moving in the same direction as nifty futures now in such case to hedge your stock position you must take a short position in the nifty futures because you have a long position in the stock so to hedge your long position of the stock you will take short position in nifty futures but the question is what value the value that you should hedge through futures contract in a short position in nifty futures will be the value which will be 16 lakhs that is the stock portfolio value multiplied by beta that is 1.2 so 16 lakhs multiplied by 1.2 would give you what 19 lakh 20 thousand 19 lakh 20 thousand should be the value of nifty futures where you should enter into nifty futures contract with a short position so let me give you the same thing presented on screen so that you can take the screenshot of the same and later on when you find time please write it in your notebooks because just taking screenshots won't help you so this is the third step determine the desired value of index future portfolio the desired value of index future portfolio will be the value of your stock portfolio that is 16 lakhs multiplied by beta that is 1.2 it will give you 19 lakh 20 thousand this is the desired value of your nifty futures contract please do the needful take the screenshot All right, I am sure you have done the needful. Now let us move ahead and write up the next step. Determine the number of index futures to be contracted. So number of index futures to be contracted will be the desired value of index future divided by index future price. Look at the question. The price of the nifty futures is given as 8000. So here number of index futures to be contracted will be 240 index and you should mention one line very clearly in your solution that Mr. X should enter into nifty futures contract for 240 units with a short position. Please uh, take the copy of this part of the solution as well and then I take you ahead. All right, time for us to move ahead. Now, imagine that the contract size is 100 units. If the contract size is 100 units, you cannot enter into a contract of 240 units. You take either two contracts of 100 units each, that would be lesser hedging than required we call that as under hedging if you take three contracts it will be 300 units it is more than what you require 
इट इज वॉट वी कॉल एज ओवर हेजिंग अंडर हेजिंग ओवर हेजिंग पॉसिबिलिटीज वोट कम इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर एग्जाम्पल बिकॉज कॉन्ट्रैक्ट साइज इज नॉट मैंशनड तो वेन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट साइज इज नॉट मैंशनड यू कैन अज्यूम अ परफेक्ट हेज यू नीड नॉट स्ट्रगल विथ अंडर हेजिंग और ओवर हेजिंग तो वॉट आई डू इज आई इंट्रोड्यूस सच एन एग्जाम्पल लिटिल लेटर where under hedging over hedging possibility will also be introduced as of now let us move to the next part so the last step will be the outcome so let me explain this fifth and last step determine the outcome of the scenario based on given information so outcome of case 1 stock portfolio you have a long position so value today is 16 lakhs value after 3 months will be 4000 shares into 340 correct this is the price of the stock that is given in case 1 and that comes to 13 lakh 60000 resulting loss will be 2 lakh 40000 this is easily determinable quickly take the screenshot and i take you ahead all right i'm sure you have done the needful moving forward index futures where you have a short position price of index futures after 3 months what we would expect will be 7000 contract you have entered into the contract with a short position that means you have agreed to sell at 8000 right 8000 was the price which is the contract price where you took short position means you have agreed to sell at 8000 but on settlement the price will be 7000 gain per index will be rupees 1000 why because you have agreed to sell at 8000 and on the settlement the price will be 7000 so my question to you is how did we get this 7000 because this was nowhere informed and can you notice i have written working note 1 for reference of this i would want you to give this in the comment section that could you understand how to get 7000 or you could not understand unless you give me the comment on this that sir i have understood or sir i have not understood without your comments i will not proceed ahead i am very clear about that you just try to put your brain into this and uh, here in this case 1000 is the gain per index number of index that you have contracted is 240 index so resulting gain will be 240000 earlier working we have shown the resulting loss of 240000 here resulting gain is 240000 there you have marked the resulting loss as a this resulting gain is b your net gain or loss will be a minus b that will be nil and that is because you are creating a perfect hedge two things i want you to do take the screenshot of this and parallelly you try to understand on your own how you get 7000 over here unless you give me the clear comment in the comment section that whether you got this or you could not get it i am not proceeding ahead i am waiting for your responses come on do the needful
I am happy to identify that people are interacting over here. See, most people may not understand on their own, but honest people will at least admit that, sir, I did not follow. And that is why we have planned these sessions, right? That you should be able to understand how we got that 7000. Don't worry. I'll explain this to you in detail and I'll then show that working also. When we approach the second case, definitely I'm going to expect that you should be able to make that calculation on your own. So let me first do my role over here. In the question, if we read the question once again, let me take you back to the question. Okay, I'm taking you back to the question right at the beginning. Look at this question once again. Look at this question once again. How much was the price of the share when you planned all this? 400. I am noting that price 400. Price in the first case is falling to 340. If I subtract 340, what do I get? I get rupees 60 as the decline in the price. I get rupees 60 as decline in the price. That 60 is the decline in the share price. I would want to know the percentage reduction in the share price. The percentage reduction in the share price will be 60 divided by 400 percent. It is a 15 percent decline. It is a 15 percent decline. 15 percent decline in the stock price. Now guys, please understand what was the value of beta? What was the value of beta? beta value in this case was 1.2 here meaning and interpretation of beta is very important beta means relative risk of your stock in relation to the market risk if beta is 1.2 that means risk of your stock is 1.2 times the market risk so imagine beta is positive that means if your stock is declining market also would have declined but you know the magnitude of decline of your stock is greater than that of market because beta is 1.2. Because beta is 1.2, the decline in your stock is bigger than the decline in market in terms of percentage. So your stock declined by 15%. One thing is guaranteed that market will not decline by 15%. So let me explain it this way. Beta is 1.2, right? So if market declines by 1%, your stock will decline by 1.2%. If market declines by 5%, if market declines by 5%, your stock will decline by 1.2 times of 5%. 1.2 times of 5% is 6%. So market declining by 5%, your stock declines by 6%. If market declines by 10%, your stock would decline by 1.2 times of 1.2 times of 10 percent that is 12 percent now use your common sense follow this logic if your stock declines at 20 percent greater intensity and that decline is 15 percent what would be the decline in the market i want you to Give the answers in the comment section. Come on. Use your common sense and tell me what would be the decline in the price in the market. That is the stock futures would decline by what percentage if 1.2 times of that is 15%. Certain decline 1.2 times of that is 15%. So what would be that original decline? Whose 1.2 times is 15%? I have given you the hint already while talking to you. If you still don't give me the answer, definitely I will not feel good. I am expecting the correct answer now. If you are watching this discussion with complete attentiveness, you would give me the answer. At least one person. I'm waiting. 
आई एम वेटिंग इफ यू कांट गेट आई एनी वे शो द कैलक्युलेशन ऑन स्क्रीन आई एल एक्सप्लेन यू ओके आ टू पीपल ऑलरेडी गेव द करेक्ट आंसर टू पीपल ऑलरेडी गेव द करेक्ट आंसर करेक्ट द आंसर इज डेफिनेटली ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट आई गेव यू हिंट दैट देर इज सर्टन डिक्लाइन इन मार्केट वन पॉइंट टू टाइम्स ऑफ दैट डिक्लाइन इज फिफ्टीन परसेंट इफ वन पॉइंट टू टाइम्स ऑफ दैट डिक्लाइन इज फिफ्टीन परसेंट वॉट वुड बी दैट डिक्लाइन तो सिंपली टेक फिफ्टीन परसेंट डिवाइडेड बाई वन पॉइंट टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट डिवाइड बाई वन पॉइंट टू वुड गिव यू ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट इज द डिक्लाइन इन द इंडेक्स फ्यूचर प्राइस सो इफ द इंडेक्स फ्यूचर प्राइस ओरिजिनली वॉज एट थाउजेंड वॉट इज ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ एट थाउजेंड बिकॉज बाय दैट परसेंटेज बाय दैट ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंटेज इट हैज डिक्लाइन सो ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ एट थाउजेंड विल बी वन थाउजेंड सो इफ एट थाउजेंड इज डिक्लाइनिंग बाय वन थाउजेंड इट्स डिक्लाइंड वैल्यू विल बी सेवन थाउजेंड सो लेट मी नाउ पुट इट ओवर हियर एज प्रॉपर प्रेजेंटेड वर्किंग आई एम हैप्पी दैट सम ऑफ यू आर गिविंग दैट आंसर on your own so i am showing that working now please carefully understand this working the percentage decrease in the share price is 15% we know the beta value right or the meaning of beta decrease in the share price will be the percentage decrease in index multiplied by beta so percentage decrease in index we don't know but we know the value of beta and we know the value of the percentage decrease in share price So 15% equals to percentage decrease in index divided by 1.2. So percentage decrease in index will be 15 divided by 1.2. That is 12.5%. Therefore, after three months, the index future price will be 8,000 minus 12.5%, and that is how you get 7,000. So please do one thing: take the screenshot of this entire working. Do not forget that. later today you should note down all these calculations in your notebook because merely taking screenshot is not going to help you ahead and i will wait for comments from your side that if you have understood this then i take you ahead if still not clear do not hesitate to put in the comment section and if required i'll explain this once again all right some students have requested me to explain it once again and i would definitely do that see first you need to understand the meaning of beta beta in this case is 1.2 times so whatever be the decrease in the index to that you multiply beta and you will be getting the decrease in the share price so as i told you if decrease in index is by 5% decrease in share price will be 6% if decrease in index is by 
decrease in share price will be 1.2 times of 10 percent. So, what is unknown over here is this percentage decrease in index where the percentage decrease in share price is 15 percent given to you. If this is 15 percent, decrease in index multiplied by 1.2 should be 15 percent. So, decrease in index will be 15 divided by 1.2 and that comes to 12.5 percent. So, once you have clearly understood, you should be able to apply the same logic when I take you ahead with the next case. The second case, before we put up the second case, you understand one more thing. Percentage decrease in index you can directly find by taking percentage decrease in share price divided by beta. So, outcome of case 2, stock portfolio where you have a long position. In case 2, the value has gone up, correct? The value has increased to 448 and you have made a gain of 192,000. So, do one thing, you first take the screenshot of this and then I take you ahead. All right, once you have taken the screenshot of this working, let me now bring you to the next calculation. So, what will be the index future position where you took a short position? What will be the outcome of this at the end of 3 months? Price at end of 3 months, that is price of the nifty futures at end of 3 months will be 8800. So, the same point prevails. How did we get this 8800? So, this time before I move ahead, let me explain this point. How did we get this 8800? <coughs> Simple point. Price of the share originally was 400. This price is rising to 448. So, 400 became 448. Increase is by 48. 48 divided by the base price 400, it is a 12 percent increase in your share price. So, 12 percent increase in your share price, correct? It would indicate 12 percent increase in the share price divided by beta which is 1.2. So, increase in share price divided by beta will give you the percentage increase in index future. So, 12 percent divided by 1.2 would give you 10 percent. That is the 10 percent increase in the price of the index future. The price of the index future when you contracted was 8000. If it is a 10 percent increase, obviously it will be 8800. So, let us uh, continue working ahead. You agreed to sell at 8000, but on settlement the price is 8800. So, obviously, there will be a loss per index amounting to 800. Number of contracts that you have or number of units you have contracted for is 240. 240 multiplied by 800 would give you loss of 192,000. And in your stock portfolio, you made a gain of 192,000. Your net gain or loss remains nil. That is perfect hedge. So, please take the screenshot of this working and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, uh, let me also show that working. 
for how we got 8800 so price was 400 and price has risen to 448 that indicates the percentage increase in share price will be 12 percent the percentage change in the index value will be 10 percent and how we got that percentage change in stock divided by beta so that is 10 percent so because the share price has increased the market index future will also increase but the increase will be only by 10 percent so look at the significance of beta over here if the index is increasing by 10 percent your stock will increase by 1.2 times of 10 percent that is how it is 12 percent so inversely if this is 12 and this is not known so 12 divided by 1.2 would give you 10 percent so index future price after three months will be 8000 plus 10 percent that is 8800 take screenshot of this working as well and then we move ahead All right, friends, uh, time for us to move ahead. Let us take the next example given in question number 17. An investor holds 1000 equity shares of X Limited that are presently quoted at rupees 200 each. The beta of this share with respect to index is 1.25. A three month contract of index future is quoted at 4000. This time the question is giving you the beta directly. The contract size of index future is 50 index point to be noted that they have given you a definite contract size 50 index per contract and investor does not have a possibility of entering into fractional contracts and hence the investor decides to take up either one or two contracts first of all why the question is talking about one or two contracts why let us go a little systematic because if you don't understand why the question is conveying one contract or two contract you will not be able to take the matter ahead so let's go step by step first step is to determine the value of the stock portfolio that you want to hedge so first step how many shares you have 1000 shares each share has a current market price of 200 so multiply by 200 your current portfolio value is rupees 2 lakhs beta is 1.25 so multiply beta multiplied by 1.25 the desired value of index future portfolio that you should have or index future contract that you should have with short position because beta is positive your stock you have a long position in nifty futures or in index futures you need to have a short position the desired value with which you take a short position is 2,50,000 but the current futures price which is quoted in the market is 4000 if i divide 250000 by 4000 i get 62.5 index now you cannot have contract of 62.5 index because the contract size is given as 50 index so either you have one contract with 50 index your requirement was 62.5 you are compromising with one contract with 50 index you are hedging less than the requirement this is what we call as under hedging if you take two contracts contract size is 50 index two contracts would result into position with 100 index requirement was 62.5 you are taking 100 index for hedging it is called over hedging so either it will result into under hedging or it will result into over hedging indicate the position of the investor in terms of gain or loss for both the situations that is one contract and two contracts if the price of the share declines by 20 percent 
also specify whether it is the case of under hedging or over hedging. So, once I have explained you a little bit over here, then you can easily have a follow up and you can understand the remaining part of the solution easily. So, procedure for hedging with index futures, you start with the first step that is determine the value of stock portfolio, then compute beta, beta was given already, then determine the desired value of index future portfolio and that will be 250,000 and then definitely we will mention that this 250,000 is the desired value, but actual value with which you hedge cannot be 250,000 because this will result into odd number of contracts or fractional contracts which is not permissible. Anyway, I will show you that working once you take note of this. So, taking note means just take the screenshot, quickly do the needful. In your comment section, I will be happy if you can give an instant feedback whether you are able to follow what we are discussing or not. Alright then, after these three steps, we move forward and we come to the fourth step to identify the number of contracts. So, here we require 62.5 indices to be contracted and as I have explained you, this is not possible. So, either you take up one contract or two contracts. One contract would result into 50 index and two contracts would be 2 into 50 that is 100 index or 100 indices. So, do one thing, quickly take screenshot of this working as well and then I take you ahead. Alright then, once you have uh, understood this, moving forward, stock portfolio where you have a long position, value today is 2 lakhs, value after 3 months with a 20 percent decline will be 1 lakh 60 thousand, so resulting loss is 40 thousand. Now, percentage decrease in index, you know how to find now, it is percentage decrease in stock divided by beta, that will be 20 percent divided by 1.25 that is 16 percent. Therefore, index future price that is expected after 3 months will be 4000 minus 16 percent that will be 3360. So, please make sure that you have understood this working, take the screenshot, do the needful and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you have taken the screenshot of this working, let us move ahead and we deal with the first case where you have taken one contract that is 50 index with short position. Value of your index future portfolio will be 4000 into 50 that is 2 lakhs. Index future where you have a short position, what will be the outcome? Price of index futures after 3 months, we have already shown the working how we got 3360 and the contract price of index futures is 4000 means you have agreed to sell. Why sell? Because you have taken a short position. You have taken a short position with 4000 on settlement the price is 3360. Your gain per index is 640 multiplied by 50 number of indexes and that would give you total gain of 32000. 
but over there you have incurred a loss of 40,000. So, your overall net loss will be 8,000. You are not able to plan a perfect hedge because you have gone for under hedging and the reason for under hedging was very clear. You wanted 62.5 index, but you have taken contract only for 50 index because of the limitation in terms of number of index per contract. So, please take screenshot of this as well and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you are clear with this first case, let us move ahead and deal with the second case where you have two contracts that will be comprising of 100 index in total. So, your value of index future portfolio will be 4 lakhs. This time the index future portfolio where you have a short position, the price of the index future after 3 months we have already computed it will be 3360 the contracted sale price was 4000 so at 4000 you took a short position and the settlement price is 3360 so gain per index has to be 640 so you understand in case 1 and case 2 these calculations won't change what will change will be the number of index this time it is 100 so now you will be having overall gain of 64000 in your index future contract but your loss in the share was 40,000. So, your net gain over here is 2,40,000. This is what we refer to as over hedge or over hedging. So, please take the screenshot of this as well. Then I will give you some notes about under hedging and over hedging. First, you take the screenshot of this. Alright friends, once you are ready to move ahead, let us talk about hedge ratio. Hedge ratio is the value of index future portfolio divided by value of stock portfolio. So, what was desired? What was desired? If you see, the desired value of your index future portfolio was 2,50,000 and the value of your stock portfolio is 2 lakhs basically desired was 1.25 so your hedge ratio should match with beta you know beta was 1.25 so hedge ratio must match with beta if you want to create a perfect hedge in case one what will happen in case one value of index future portfolio was only 2 lakhs against the stock portfolio value of 2 lakhs your hedge ratio was only 1 whereas beta was 1.25 that is why it is under hedging and in case 2 the hedge ratio was 2 whereas the beta was 1.25 that is why it is over hedging. So, point is very clear if the hedge ratio is equal to beta it is perfect hedge if hedge ratio is less than beta it is under hedging if hedge ratio is greater than beta it is over hedging. So, I will give you those lines as well. But first you take the screenshot of this working.
all right then let us write that concluding point as well so if reg sorry if hedge ratio is less than beta it results into under hedging if hedge ratio is greater than beta it results into over hedging if hedge ratio is equal to beta it results into perfect hedge so write these concluding lines quickly and then i take you ahead All right, friends. Uh, let us move ahead and take up the next example given in question number nineteen. Now, question nineteen is slightly bigger. Please handle it very well. On first April two thousand fifteen, an investor has a portfolio consisting of eight securities as shown below. You have securities A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Market price and number of shares given and beta given. each securities beta is given to you further cost of capital for the investor is 20% per annum continuously compounded the investor fears a fall in the price of the share in the near future accordingly he approaches you for the advice to protect the interest of his portfolio you can make use of the following information the current nifty value is 8500 Nifty futures can be traded in units of twenty-five only. Futures for May are currently quoted at eight thousand seven hundred, and futures for June are being quoted at eight thousand eight fifty. Further, in the question, it is informed you are required to calculate the beta of his portfolio, then the theoretical value of the futures contract for expiring in May and June. and they have given some values of e raised to 0.03 e raised to 0.04 and e raised to 0.05 the number of nifty contracts that he would have to sell if he desires to hedge until june in each of the following cases now what he desires to hedge number 1 his total portfolio means he wants a perfect hedge 50% of his portfolio that is basically under hedging 120% of his portfolio means it is over hedging but to handle a big question like this your approach towards your solution has to be very systematic so let me take you back and explain you what exactly you are required to do over here you know those five steps that we have learnt in the first step you should compute the value of your stock portfolio this time it is multiple stock included in your portfolio so number of shares multiplied by the market price of each share would give you how much money you have invested in each stock that will be your value of stock portfolio through the amount invested in each you will assess the proportion of the money invested and you would get the weights and beta of each individual stock is given so beta of your portfolio will be the weighted average of betas of these individual stocks this is going to be a little longer step this time because it is not a single stock but a cluster of eight different stocks given to you along with different beta values fine so we can carry out the first step that will be towards computing portfolio beta and the first step obviously will be even to compute the overall value of the stock portfolio that you want to hedge so you first compute the value of your stock portfolio then compute portfolio beta and then we plan the hedge so let me show you how to present the solution over here in your solution the first thing is computation of portfolio beta because that was the first requirement in the question so security a the market price is 29.40 number of shares that you are holding is 400 shares 
value will be a into b that is market price per share into 400 that is number of shares you get 11760 as the value beta is already given in the question and then what we do is we multiply the beta to the value of the stock to get the weighted beta and we keep doing like this for each of the eight stocks once you complete the entire working you will then divide the weighted beta that is the last column with the total value of your stock portfolio to get the weighted average beta so carefully take note of this whole thing and i would strongly recommend this is a good question which you must solve it manually at later stage after the session gets over so please uh, as of now please take the screenshot of this working and uh, once you are done and clear with this we will move ahead All right, friends, once you have completed the understanding and taking the screenshot of this working, let us move ahead and we compute the portfolio beta by dividing the weighted beta by the value of stock portfolio and your portfolio beta comes to 1.102. Then the next thing is the theoretical value that is FFP of futures contract. Now, uh, because we are having this as revisionary classes, how to compute the theoretical value of FFP? Multiple possibilities can exist over there. In each possibility, how to compute FFP? I have recorded a separate video on theoretical value of FFP. The whole computation has been explained over there. As of now, I will just move ahead with the calculation part. So, FFP is S0 into A raised to RT. S0 is the spot price and FFP is the fair futures price. So, spot price for the current index is 8500 and FFP will be 8500 multiplied by E raised to RT and that rate of interest is given as 20% time for remaining maturity. If it is May contract, it is two months and June contract it is three months. Now first of all why we are doing all this calculation only because the question has demanded the calculation of theoretical value of the futures contract. In all the other questions that we have solved earlier the value of the futures contract was already given. This is the first time when you have to determine the theoretical value of the futures contract. So before I show you the calculations ahead quickly take the screenshot of this working. All right, friends, once uh, this is done, moving ahead and you compute the FFP for May. Now, first of all, we wanted E raised to RT. Now, it was two months time. So, time is always to be expressed in number of years. It is 2 by 12 in terms of number of years. 2 by 12 when multiplied to the interest rate of 0.2 what you get is e raised to 0 0.03333 however in the question they gave you the value of e raised to 0 0.03 and e raised to 0 0.04 now this value you will have to compute through interpolation and how to apply interpolation again 
आई हैव गिवन अ सेपरेट वीडियो ऑन दैट कंप्यूटिंग इंटरपोलेशन और कंप्यूटिंग एनी अप्रोक्सीमेट वैल्यू थ्रू इंटरपोलेशन सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस हाउ वी गॉट दिस वैल्यू एज वन पॉइंट जीरो थ्री थ्री एट सेवन यू कैन अप्लाई इंटरपोलेशन सो इट विल बी समथिंग बिटवीन ई रेस टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री एंड ई रेस टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर सो दैट थ्रू इंटरपोलेशन वी विल बी गेटिंग दिस एज वन पॉइंट जीरो थ्री थ्री एट सेवन एंड दिस विल बी फॉर मे वेन इट कम्स टू जून ई रेस टू जीरो पॉइंट टू इन टू थ्री बाय ट्वेल्व जीरो पॉइंट टू इन टू थ्री बाय ट्वेल्व विल गिव यू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव बट ई रेस टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव द वैल्यू इज डायरेक्टली गिवन सो हियर फॉर जून कॉन्ट्रैक्ट यू डोंट हैव टू अप्लाई इंटरपोलेशन एट ऑल यू जस्ट हैव टू मेक द कैलक्युलेशन सो प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस वर्किंग डू द नीडफुल एंड देन आई टेक यू अहेड so up to this stage we have worked out the theoretical value of futures contract for may as well as june now we move ahead and deal with the last part number of nifty contracts that he would have to sell if he desires to hedge until june in each of the following cases first case determine the value of stock portfolio at present that is 9,94,450 we have already computed this determine beta that also we have done so the desired value of your nifty futures where you have to take a short position will be the value of your stock portfolio multiplied by beta of your portfolio and that comes to 10,95,884 once you get this value 10,95,884 you will be dividing this by the theoretical value of june contract because you want to hedge your portfolio through the june contract so anyway you quickly take the screenshot of this working first and then i take you ahead all right friends so, so let us move ahead and now what we do is we will be considering the contract size as 25 nifties the futures price for june contract is 8850 the value of june futures will be 221250 for each contract and here we want how many contracts the desired value of nifty futures if you want to create a perfect hedge will be considering the hedge ratio where hedge ratio should match with beta i have explained you this point already quickly take the screenshot of this and then i take you ahead all right friends i'm sure you have taken the screenshot of this moving forward we make the computation if he wants to hedge his entire portfolio you will simply take 10,95,884 divided by 221,250 that will be 4.935 contracts now that is not possible so you have to round it off to 5 contracts if he wants to hedge only 50% of his portfolio then it would amount to under hedging where you would take 2.477 contracts again you have to round it off to 3 contracts if you want to hedge 120% of his portfolio you will multiply 120% and you would be getting 6 contracts simple logic is here you are taking 5 contracts for creating a perfect hedge so it will be 120% of your portfolio if you want to hedge which will be over hedging 120% of 5 contracts will be what 6 contracts 
if it is 50% of 5 contracts, it will be 2.5 contracts. But because 2.5 contracts are not possible, we have rounded off to 3 contracts. This will be the end of the solution. So, please take the screenshot of this as well and then I take you ahead. All right, friends, once you have completed this much and you are clear with this, so we move ahead and we take up one more example given in question number 22. Look at this. The question gives you BAC 5000, value of portfolio 10 lakh 10,000, risk free interest rate 9 percent, dividend yield on index 6 percent, beta of portfolio 1.5. Now, first of all, we assume that a future contract on the BAC index with 4 months maturity is used to hedge the value of portfolio over next 3 months. Look at one thing, they did not give you BSC futures, they give you BSC. That means this is the current index value. We do not have any information about the futures price. So, it is implied that we will have to find the price of futures contract and that is why the first requirement in the question is the price of futures contract. Now, as I told you computing theoretical futures price, there are separate videos that I have given for this purpose and if you are not able to find out those videos on my YouTube channel, what you can just do is just uh, give a message on WhatsApp at uh, my office number and my team will share the link of those videos. But those things you can do later. As of now, you concentrate on what we have to do. This is a different possibility that is dividend yield on index is given as 6 percent. So, basically what is the logic behind this? Generally, we take uh, the rate of interest as our cost of capital, correct? Over here, you will arrange funds at 9 percent, but when you are investing that money on the index, you are getting yield of 6 percent. So, your net interest cost will be 9 minus 6 that is 3 percent. The detailed explanation of this you will be finding in those videos where I have given the base of theoretical future price calculations. Anyway, simple thing right now is 9 percent is your cost, 6 percent is your recovery, your net cost towards interest will be 3 percent only. So, how to compute the value of your futures? as a theoretical value of your futures, you pick 5000 and the futures contract is for 4 months. So, 5000 into 9 minus 6 that is 3 percent into 4 by 12 that will give you the increase in the price of the futures or the interest element which added to the initial price or the current price or the spot price you will be getting the theoretical value of futures. Mind it here we are not using the continuous compounding because question is silent about continuous compounding. Question needs to inform you what will be the value of e raise to something whatever you are getting in your calculations otherwise you will not be able to apply continuous compounding unless you know how to determine e raise to anything directly through your calculator. Now on this uh, I would recommend all of you to be clear. Suppose you want to find value of e raise to 0 0.03 on your ordinary calculators. CMA students are allowed to carry scientific calculators in examination. I hope you all know it correct. So, you can directly make calculation of e raise to anything on your calculator directly correct. You do not even have to use interpolation that is speciality of CMA exams in India. However, if you are a CA final student, you are not allowed to carry scientific calculators. With ordinary calculators, how to do that? CA students have to struggle a little, little bit to learn that tactic, but uh, that is a skill that uh, you should have. So, I have separate videos recorded just to explain those calculations. Anyway, 
right now it is not your concern so i will not talk about that so we have uh, four months contract so we will find the futures price easily so 5000 is the spot price to this you have to add interest interest will be computed as 5000 into 9 minus 6 that is 3 percent so 5000 into 3 percent into 4 by 12 that will be the interest element added to 5000 you will be getting the theoretical price of the futures now understand one thing you are going to use contract of four months to make hedging over three months that means the contract that you are using the contract maturity is four months but you don't want to you know hedge it for four months you want to hedge your stock only for three months maybe after three months your stock price is expected to move up where you don't want to create the effect of hedge so you will have to square off your position by end of three months this is the first time you are handling a question where the contract period is four months but you don't want to hedge your stock for four months you want to hedge your stock only for three months so what you will have to do your contract will not be settled by end of three months you will have to square off your position by giving an indication to the futures market that i want to square off my position at this date whatever be the price prevailing that day you will have to fine now understand one thing the contract period is four months so current futures price you can find by taking that four months value after three months when you are going to square off your position that time don't forget that the remaining maturity of your contract is still one month you will have to again find the futures price for one month remaining maturity and based on that you will be squaring off your position so let me now show you how to present your solution over here in your solution you begin with the first step that is determine the value of stock portfolio at present it is already given in the question step 2 is determining the beta that is also given step 3 will be the desired value of index future portfolio which will be value of stock portfolio into beta 10 lakh 10 thousand into 1.5 times it will give you 15 lakh 15 thousand so please take note of uh, this working through taking a screenshot and then I take you ahead. All right, friends, once you have understood this part, let us move ahead. And uh, now what we do is we take up the four month future price and this calculation would be 5000 plus the interest element. Interest element will be 5000 into 3%. I explained you why to take 3% into the remaining maturity that is four months by 12 months. So four by 12. So 5000 is the spot price, 50 is the interest element. So the futures price will be 5050. So price of the futures contract for one contract where there are 50 index, 5050 into 50 will give you 252,500. Step 4 you determine the number of contracts. So desired value of your index future portfolio where you should take a short position is 15 lakh 15,000 divided by the value of each contract that is 2,52,500 
would give you six contracts. See, there can be a little alternate way of uh, presenting this working. Let me explain that as well. See, your desired value of index future portfolio was what? Tell me. It was 15 lakh 15,000, right? 15 lakh 15,000. This we have worked out in the third step. Desired value of your index future portfolio. Each index theoretical price of each index future is 5050. If I divide 15 lakh 15,000 by 5050, I will be getting 300 index. That 300 index once you get, each contract has 50 index. So, number of contracts will be 6 contracts. Even that way you can work out 6 contracts. So, quickly take the screenshot of this working and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, so once you have completed this part, let us move ahead and after 3 months, if the index turns out to be 4500, how would you find the gain? Now again, this is the index value, that is the current index value. Do not forget, the index futures contract had the total maturity period of 4 months, 3 months have passed, so 1 month remaining maturity. For one month remaining maturity, the futures price you again find out exactly the same way as we did earlier and you entered in the contract with a short position where the contract price at which you have agreed to sell was 5050. On the squaring of date, the futures contract has a price of 4511.25. This is the price at which you agreed to sell. This is the price at which your contract is getting squared off. Difference between these two will be the gain per index future multiplied by 50 index per contract and multiplied by 6 contracts. Your total gain in your short futures position will be 1,61,625. Take screenshot of this as well and then I have an announcement to make. Fine then. Uh, now see we have uh, one more variety in the futures where hedging through futures contract is important. What I am planning to do for you, I will premiere a lecture on hedging through currency futures on this coming Sunday exclusively for you and I will be keeping that video available for a few days for you to watch. So, it will be better if you join exactly at the same time where I premiere the video. I will make the clear announcement um, and the exact time. Um, it will be somewhere in the afternoon of this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday is what 11th of June if I am not wrong, right? 11th of June? 11th of June coming Sunday, in the afternoon session, we will be having a uh, streaming of this video on hedging through currency futures. And uh, what I want you all to do is, before we uh, experience that, you should have good background knowledge of forex concepts, because forex blended with futures contract concept, then you will be able to understand the hedging through currency futures. Beautiful concept it is and I will be covering good number of varieties of questions for your reference. Same thing in that video as well, I will not be allowing you to uh, you know note down everything. It will be a quick video where I will ask you to just take the screenshot and do the needful. 
so uh, that will happen on sunday uh, today in the afternoon session which i am starting at 2 o'clock exactly i'll be sharing the new link of that or you can you know find that uh, live streaming on my channel directly at 2 pm so i'm going to focus on the next variety of uh, derivative topic that is options now as i said these topics are huge within limited time we cannot cover everything so i will try to cover as much as possible we will begin with the basics of options we will see what uh, we can do we can reach up to a certain level where we can talk about option valuation and all and uh, let me know uh, what exactly you want me to cover in the options lecture you can write in the comment box and uh, i will be picking your comments from there and what you want to learn in options let us uh, plan it and in the next follow up session of derivatives i'll come up with uh, options so please uh, don't forget to put forward your comments in what you want me to cover in options and uh, as i told you do not miss out sunday afternoon 2 pm when i'll be premiering the video on currency futures that is hedging foreign exchange risk through currency futures so please stay tuned and uh, keep messaging me through the chat box or in the comment section of the videos what you want me to do additionally for you in the upcoming classes and i'll keep doing that for your reference thank you very much for attending this session